it's Larissa from The Organised Nest and today I'm going to take you through a little tour of my new Erin Condren teacher planner. I, this is my third Erin uh, Condren teacher planner so I already know that I love using it and that I will actually use it. I love that you can personalise the cover so I've just added my name onto the front and I also added one of my favourite quotes. This was called the Believe You Can cover. And like all Erin Condren products now, the cover is removable. You just pop it out and you can swap it out with a different cover over time if you like. Open it up and we've just got the same confetti image inside. And the first page here is a spot for you to write your name. As you can see, as I'm turning the pages, the coil's really nice and big and sturdy. Another quote page. And then all about me. I don't normally uh, put any passwords in here because I do like to just leave this on my desk only if it's anything that's not too important. But this web resources is definitely something I use. Over the page we've got classroom events and volunteers and a helpful hints for the substitute or as we call it in Australia a relief teacher. This is really helpful here for them to have an idea of the school schedule and especially people to contact if they need any help. This is probably the first page that I will have to do quite a bit of altering to. And it's a double spread of holidays and dates to remember. The reason I'll change it is because it starts in July and goes through to June following the American school year. And also because most of the dates are really only specific to America. There are a few free printables floating around where you can just print them off and stick them over the top to go with Australian holidays. So I'll probably hunt those down in the next few days. Over the page, we've got a double spread for birthday chart. Now, some people don't like the way that this works because it again goes on the American school year, but I actually love it because here in Queensland, our the date of birth of our children in our year levels starts from the 1st of July is the cutoff to the 30th of June. So I like to write their birthdays in in this order because it helps me to look at a glance who's the oldest in the class and who's the youngest in the class. Next we have an absentee log. We do all of our role and absentees online so I probably won't use this for that specific reason but it is a very handy checklist for other things so I'm definitely thinking of using this for something else. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six pages of that. Now our next tab, I'll just point out that all these tabs are laminated so they're really sturdy for lots of use during the year and as you can see the next one is graph paper. I love graph paper. I use graph paper for all my bullet journaling, for graphing. This one I'll probably use to do some sort of classroom setup ideas. It's also good for tracking progress in certain areas. And we've got one, two, three, four, six, eight, eight pages of graph paper. And then our next is our year plan. This is great to be able to see it all at a glance. Again, I think I'll leave the boxes as is, but I'm going to change these headings. And what I'm actually thinking of doing is dividing these up into subject areas and then dividing them up into semesters. So for example, I could put just one sticker over the top of all of that with English and then have it covered for term one, two, three, and four. Just divide these in half and then vice versa. But I'll have a little play around. I just use printable sticker paper to go over the top of those. It's easy enough. Or you can just change the months if you want to plan month by month. Notes page. 
and then over to our first of our monthly. So you can see now we're tabbed. You can decide when you order how you want the order to go. So you can start in June or July if you're using an American or UK school year. Or for me in Australia, we start our school year in January. So I've got January down to December. So at the front of each one is a color-coded quote page. And over the page is our monthly spread. Now this monthly spread comes undated, so it can be used in any school year. Um, the one thing that does annoy me slightly, and the Americans won't agree, but it's got a Sunday start. And I really like to have the weekends together and have a Monday start, but small, only a small issue. The planner actually comes with date dots. So you don't have to write in all the dates in here. You just have a little dot with a number on it that you can stick on. So it's a double page monthly spread and then with a section for notes, a section of a 2015 calendar and 2016 calendar. And then that's the same, it just goes as a page for notes after each one and then that just goes through to February, March, April, May, June, July etc etc all the way through to December now comes the most important part the lesson planning pages so we've just got a quote page here and then here we've got a lesson tab and here is our weekly spread now I know this is very different to a lot of Australian teacher planners because it has the days of the week down the side and then the periods or the time of the day across the page. This did take a little bit of getting used to, I'll be honest, but now that I'm using this format, your eyes do just tend to work across the page. I also set out my baskets on my teacher desk across as well. So I have all my things for period one in the first basket and across so this helps me to go across here. I work in a P to 12 school, so we do run on a period timetable. That doesn't mean that we have the same subject each day at the, at the same time, but it does mean that each period is at the same time every day. So at the top here, this year I think I'm going to do stickers here, just because it's quite tedious to write out the exact same information every day for 40 weeks. So you can also get little stickers to put in here as well with just whatever week it is of the term. Here you write the date and that's your weekly spread. It goes over two pages. So we have, there's seven columns and we have a six period day. So I usually use the very last column as a to-do list. So then I think there's about 50 of those pages offhand. Now my second favourite part of the teacher planner. The next tab is checklists. You can add extra checklists when you purchase. There's a little option. I think it costs you a few dollars extra. But I find that um, I've generally year to year had enough in here. This is such an easy to follow format. I love that it's coloured across. It's so easy to use when you're inputting a whole heap of student marks, which is what I generally use this for. I also use one page to track notes returned, whether it's be for swimming lessons, um, parent-teacher interviews, anything. You only have to write the students, your class names in once. So with the checklist pages, you can just cut off one section here and then you can see the same list of students' names through all of the pages. Then we're on to the next section. After the checklist pages, we've got a, another full page of quote and then another very exciting, I think really this is uh, very pertinent to the EC planners. I haven't seen any other teacher planners that have this feature and it's stickers. 
there's a whole heap. These ones are pre-printed, so we've got reminder, progress reports due, report cards due, benchmarks, testing, computer lab, conferences, library, first day, last day, emergency drills, field trips, observation. And over the page, we've got assembly, IEPs, duty, staff meetings, furlough, which we don't really have here, and holiday. And then there's a few pages of blank stickers. So you can just write on these with the Sharpie is the best thing because they are kind of slightly glossy. So a normal pen may rub off. So I find Sharpies are the best to use on these. And we've got two pages of those. Then at the back here, something as well that you find in all Erin Condren planners is a keep it together folder. And as you can see, this is A4 size. It's kind of a laminated, very sturdy uh, cardboard. And it's got a little pocket here to put your things in. And it's double sided. So when you turn it over, you have another pocket on the other side. Now in the back here is a little plastic pocket. Now I actually added an extra one. Same thing again, you can choose a few different options at the checkout when you go to buy one of these. So it comes standard with just one plastic pocket and I added an extra one because I tend to overstuff that a single one during the year. And a little Ziploc plastic pocket. It's probably I'd say a five size and this is all the goodies that you get um, in there when you buy it. You've got your do-it-all dots, which are just sort of little icon dots, date dots. This is a coil clip here, so you can attach this to anything else you've got that you want to be able to attach, clip onto the coil. And the very back is your other laminated cover. You can pay extra when you design your own planner to have a photo put on the back cover. I've just left it blank this year and the front and the back are exactly the same and it's also removable so there you have it a little look at my Erin Condren teach planner for the next school year I can't wait to start moving into it and start personalizing it to suit my year level if you have any questions about the Erin Condren teacher planner just leave them in the comment section below. Or if you'd like to purchase your own Erin Condren teacher planner, you can use the affiliate link below. For more organising and teaching tips and tricks, check out theorganisednest.com.